Hello, you're listening to Everyday Encouragement, Timeless Truths for Today, a weekly podcast designed to bring you snippets of encouragement to help you as you go about your day. I'm Jenny Guy, your host. Whenever an invitation is sent, an RSVP is expected in reply so the planner can know how many people to prepare for. Did you know that God gives us invitations and expects RSVPs from us? We'll look at some of his invitations in today's episode. Let's get started. Invitations are requests to invitees to join the inviter in a time of fun and fellowship and more than likely food. An invitation basically says that the inviter wants to spend time with you, the invitee. He or she wants to see you, whether it's within the context of a party or a celebration or an event recognizing a significant milestone. An invitation could even be just to spend some time hanging out together. To help the host plan, an RSVP is issued along with the invitation. Equally as important as the invitation, the RSVP lets the host know whether the guest has accepted or declined the invitation. Sometimes, though, both the invitation and the RSVP are treated lightly with neither being given proper respect and consideration. There's a story in the New Testament about a king who prepares a great banquet and sends invitations to his guests. They all find reasons, some of them quite flimsy, to refuse the king's invitation. Frustrated and not wanting his banquet to be wasted, The king sends his servants out to the highways and instructs them to bring back with them to his palace anyone who wanted to eat. As a result, the king's banquet hall was filled with people he hadn't originally intended to invite, but who enjoyed his food nevertheless. This is an example of an invitation that was taken lightly. My daughter experienced a similar situation recently. She's a member of a service group that each month, in addition to their business meeting, gets together for a fun event at a restaurant chosen by the organizer. The members take turns organizing that event. This time it was her turn to be the organizer. My daughter selected the restaurant and sent invitations using one of those evite programs that allows you to see who's coming along with all of the invitees' responses. A large number of the group said they would definitely attend. The night came. Can you guess what happened? If you said that no one showed up, then you would have been right. Only my daughter and her sponsor were at the restaurant. This time, it was the RSVP that was taken lightly. The king in the story was God. Jesus told it to illustrate how we sometimes respond to God's invitations to us. On the other hand, my daughter was just an ordinary person who was trying to arrange an enjoyable evening for her colleagues. I thought about these incidents especially the king's story, and wondered about the lessons they taught. I quickly decided that my daughter's situation was unfortunate, maybe even a bit rude, and should be addressed by her group's leaders so it wouldn't happen again. But the king's story, ah, that one deserved much more consideration for its lessons have consequences both here and now and for eternity. Here's what I came up with. I decided that while the king's story has many messages that we should heed, one of the most critical 
focuses on how we value and respond to God's invitations to us. That thought led me to wonder if there were other invitations in the Bible that may not be recognized as invitations, and therefore we don't respond to them. I found three I'd like to share with you. They may not look like invitations because of their wording, but they are nevertheless. Consider this one from Psalm 27, verse 8. David writes, When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Here we have an invitation and an RSVP that said, Yes. God had invited David to develop a relationship with him, and David accepted that invitation by saying he would draw closer to God. That's what the term, seek my face, means. When we see that term in the Bible, it is God's invitation for us to spend time with him, to get to really know him and his ways through prayer, reading the Bible, listening to sermons, and supplementing what we hear by reading the works of Bible teachers and scholars and attending their classes and conferences. But here's a cautionary note. Don't substitute reading or attending class or listening to sermons for spending time in direct one-on-one -on -one interaction with God. That interaction comes through contemplation, meditation, and prayer. Here's another invitation. It's found in the book of Jeremiah, 33rd chapter, and the third verse. In that verse, the Lord is speaking, and he says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. God issued this invitation as part of a prophecy to the prophet Jeremiah during a period of great turmoil in Israel's history. Jeremiah RSVP'd yes to God's invitation, for his story is about how he continued to receive revelations from God and then gave them to the people of Israel throughout his life. There is a promise within that prophecy that is also for us today, for God has not changed during all those centuries that have passed between Jeremiah and us. That promise is in the words, Call to me. That's also God's invitation to us. We are responding yes with our RSVP when we accept God's invitation and call out to Him. He has promised to answer us when we do so. Finally, consider this invitation in Psalm 50, verse 15. This scripture also invites us to call upon God, but in very specific circumstances. It says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. David had clearly responded yes to God's invitation when he wrote this psalm. David's life shows that he turned to God again and again, and he always experienced God's deliverance, whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation. This invitation clearly states that we will have days of trouble. Those days come from the problems caused by being sick, broke, or hassled by haters. God is inviting us to call upon Him when those days come. And He has promised that if we accept His invitation, then He will definitely help us out. 
We are a SVP, yes, when we ask God for his help. After God has delivered us from our challenging circumstances, then we, in turn, can tell others about how he intervened in our lives when we asked him to do so. We will have our own concrete proof to share with others that God lives and is more than willing to be a part of our lives if we ask him to be. There you have it. Three different invitations, all carrying basically the same message, that God is inviting us to draw close to him. What will your RSVP be? I hope you heard something today that has encouraged you and possibly given you something new to think about that will motivate or inspire you. If you would like a PDF copy of the show notes for this episode of Everyday Encouragement, Timeless Truths for Today, visit my website at jguypublisher.com. New episodes are published each week on Wednesday. I hope you'll join me for another installment of Everyday Encouragement, Timeless Truths for Today. Well, That's it for now. Until next time, be encouraged.